Good morning. Good morning, Pray First family. How are you doing today? <clears throat> Hi, it is um, Pastor Ann, and I am sitting in right now um, at a brand new location. Last night I was trying to figure out where I wanted to start Pray First, and I thought, you know, I have an idea. Let's do something different. I usually go from our Cross Point Church, or sometimes I go from my home, but this time I thought I would kind of bring you to a new environment, kind of show you what we've been doing here. Um, behind the scenes um, at another one of our organizations that I'm a part of um, and that's Destiny Center so it's been something huge that has been going on all summer and it tied into so many different things that it's like I love the cohesiveness of what's going on sometimes you know when when God is talking to you from all different directions so I thought what a better place to start this morning than here so I'm gonna do a couple shout outs good morning Lana good morning Barbie hey Corinne how are you doing good morning Brenda Hi Katrina, how are you doing this morning? Um, it is extremely warm in the Mid-South right now. So warm and it's, but it's fabulous. I don't mind the heat. I am so cold natured that I can't stand the winter. I'm not sure how I feel about this humidity right now because whoo, it's already seven in the morning and I'm already a little glistening, I'm glistening. So um, I'm gonna wait a couple more seconds, let people come on in. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Patty. How are you guys doing this morning? Can you believe it's Friday? This is the first week that, like my daughter Lee and I were talking last night, this is the first, first week that didn't fly. Usually I'm just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's Friday. And last night I'm like, I can't believe it's only Thursday, which is fantastic because I felt like I got a lot of stuff done this week. And um, Friday's my Sabbath, so I'm gonna really enjoy today. But um, I wanted to go ahead and kind of share with you different things that are going on. So as you may know, I think a lot of you know that um, Pastor Doug is not only the senior pastor over at Cross Point Church, but he's also the CEO of an organization called Destiny Center. And what Destiny Center is, it's it basically think about it as a mobile community center. Um, Destiny Center's vision is to reach people with, with goods, resources, everything, um, services, that they can't get to. So it doesn't matter if you have items, if you have food, if you have medical, if you have all these items, if you can't actually get to it. So Destiny Center was developed as a mobile resource center. So that's why we have things like, um, we have D2, which takes people to um, doctor's appointments, and we also do different initiatives for our community so that we can reach people if they can't come to us. That is the best summation I can do real quick. So I'm also one of the board members of Destiny Center and also on staff at Crosspoint. So I thought this morning, I'm just gonna take advantage and share with you lots of things that will also affect us as disciples, um, which of course, with Pray First, what we are is we're giving God our first. So I got sidetracked. So hey, everyone, do me a favor. If you're here, uh, make sure you're hashtagging live, hashtagging recorded, tag your friends out if you'd like to, and also share this out. Make sure you're sending out the hearts and the thumbs up and everything along the side to let people know, our new time people know that we are so excited that they are here. All right, so anyways, I decided to come for you this morning from Old Town Fitness, and Old Town Fitness is where we've been doing this magnificent project, and what we're doing is we are feeding 500 kids per week in the DeSoto County area and some Marshall County as well, and what we're doing is we're bringing them non-perishable sack lunches five days of the week. And a Destiny Center um, reached out to the school systems and we're targeting food insecure children who usually take advantage of the school lunch program or the back, back the backpack program um, for the weekend. We targeted them that realized that, hey, during the summertime, these kids don't have the resources, their parents may be working and can't get them to the resources, so we decided to bring it to them. So we're doing 500 lunches a week for the entire summer, and so if you do the math real quick, that's 500 lunches, five days a week, we're packing 2,500 lunches per week, which is 5,000 every two weeks, 10,000 a month and we we are packing currently week four so before I dive into the word which I will be reading from Philippians today because we are in still that hashtag Bible project 21 I wanted to kind of show you what we've been doing okay so here we go so again Old Town Fitness and Olive Branch were so gracious to us I reached out and said hey we're trying to pack all these lunches and we didn't have the facilities to do so and we only needed it for the summer and they said we have this uh, we have this space you're welcome to use it at no cost to Destiny Center so anyways over here 
Over here right now, you see pallets of food. Can you see the pallets of food? Well, again, we are in week four. So what we do is we get the pro uh, we get um, 10,000 um, 10,000 product, the protein, the chips, the fruit, everything we put in the lunch sack, we get 10,000 at a time. So what you're seeing right here is only one week's worth. So when, when we first came here, it was like stacked high, like pallet upon pallet upon pallet, but we're down, now we're down to like just a couple lines in each pallet. Then after we pack each of the lunch sacks, when we get to um, a full week's worth, and again, we just finished packing all of week three, then what we do is we route it. And so um, of the 500 kids, that represents over 150 families. And then of those 150 families, what we did is we used this program to group, um, to group them up so that there were routes developed so that every person would take three or four houses, no more than like 70 lunches. And some people are overachievers and they wanted to do several routes at once, which was fantastic because we had over 41 routes. So let me show you some of the, so these are them all being routed. So what we do is we pull the amount of lunches per family that each um, each child signed up. So like, you know, family can have three kids and so then we grab three kids, you know. So you got three kids, five days of the week, 15 lunches for that family. We assemble it all so when our route drivers come um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to pick them up, because again, they're delivered every week, we take it over to them. So I wanna show you just how many, this is, I can't, let me show you if I can show you. That is a lot of lunches. Oh, and I gotta show you this. So um, we pack Monday through Friday, um, Monday through Saturday in the morning, but then look back here. See this huge AstroTurf football field? That's what we do once a month. So once a month we do a huge push, and the next one we're gonna be doing is July 4th. And that's when July 4th, I mean, so the first Sunday in June when we started this, we um, packed Goodness, we, we are only, and I say only loosely, only able to pack 5,000 lunches because of space limitations. But we've worked out some logistics, we've worked out some different things, so in theory, we'll be able to pack so much more. But what I love about this project, and why I um, hashtagged out, if you noticed the, the post this morning, is this, is this is us being the hands and feet of Jesus. So instead of just talking about the fact that there's food insecure kids, we're actually doing something about it. And this is so magnificent to me because it's partnering with all different people. So it is Cross Point Church. It's a nonprofit Destiny Center. It is different businesses, including, ooh, Niagara Water. Niagara Water is our sponsor. Um, they've donated quite a bit. And so we also have cold Niagara Water available for of our own volunteers when they come in to help pack. <clears throat> But I posted out there earlier this week also on my personal page as far as what a paradigm shift is. And a paradigm shift is when something that you thought, you, you know, it's like when your thought process and everything, what was, becomes something new. And for me, the paradigm shift that I was referring to then was, you know, we're in the middle of a series called Called at the Church, and that's when we're talking about the differences between being a Christian and being a disciple. And I was just amazed at if you just really think about the differences, it becomes a paradigm shift. Instead of just saying that that you believe in because uh, we actually start to follow we actually start to become disciples and that's that's what this is behind me and that's the paradigm shift I was thinking about this morning and one of the reasons why I also wanted to be here is this people you know we always think that someone else will do it or maybe it's the government's job to take care of these kids who may be hungry or maybe it's someone else who else can do it well why can't you why can't we why can't we make a difference we're feeding over 500 kids and it's amazing and it's and it's everyone just some of the volunteers that come out they're young and old we've had young young kids come out because everybody everybody can put things in a sack and then we've had older people who may have had some um, some limitations come out but we have chairs you can sit at the table and you can put stickers on it you can be a delivery person if you just like you know I don't know I work during the week I'm not sure those hours that you come in we do have Saturday hours by the way I can't I don't know if I can do that so what they do is then then you can deliver also a lot of people have been financially giving to this project and you're welcome to do so as well I can post out the link later on if you would like to do that but all in all, let's, let's shift. Let's shift our thinking to think that someone else can do it and realize that we can do it. We can do it, we can make an impact. 
So on that note, I wanted to go ahead and um, jump into Philippians. And I love, I can't believe we're in another book. So hashtag Bible Project 21. We are already, I think, I think Philippians is the 11th book. So that means there's 27 books in the New Testament. We're over 30% through with the New Testament. So I get a launch into Philippians today. <coughs> And of course, okay, so just a little background on Philippians. Philippians is a, another um, letter that is written by the Apostle Paul. And he's actually writing this letter to the church in Philippi. And um, just a little history to, behind Philippi. It was a very, Philippi had a lot of um, Roman soldiers. It was very, it was a very patriotic area. And so he's writing this letter to them and he is in prison while he's writing this letter. And that made me think of, you know, as he's, re as he's writing this letter, I want you to keep that in mind, where he physically is, because I don't know about you, but when, I'm, when someone's telling me about what I should do or how I should feel or how I should react, sometimes the thing that goes through my mind is you have no idea what I'm dealing with. You have never walked in my shoes. And it kind of makes you, um, it irritates you, right? Well, Paul, on the other hand, so when you're suffering, when you're struggling, you can, when you're reading the epistles that Paul read, Paul wrote, you can realize that he's not operating from this place where he had the silver spoon in his mouth and he has no idea what suffering or challenges are like. He actually is in prison writing this letter to us so that we can know God, what God is trying to tell us. <coughs> Which reminds me too, you know, um, I just wanted to say real quick that if you have not caught the last two days of Pray First, and that's where Pastor Doug is talking about strength and tough times, strength and tough times, you don't want to miss that because Pastor is talking to us about what we should do and he's drawing that from Isaiah and it just, again, to me that just all ties in from, you know, how we're, how we're to respond as Christians versus disciples and understanding what to do in tough times and the fact that I'm diving into what Paul's about ready to teach us when it comes to the letter in Philippians. So on that note, I'm not going to read too much because I know I've already kind of gone into everything because I really wanted to show you what's going on behind me, but I am going to get started. We're going to start the book of Philippians. All right. So here we go. <clears throat> Philippians chapter one, Paul and Timothy, both of us committed servants of Christ Jesus, write this letter to all the followers of Jesus in Philippi, pastors and ministers included. We greet you with the grace and peace that comes from God and our master, Jesus Christ. A love that will grow. Every time you cross my mind, I break out in exclamations of thanks to God. Each exclamation is a trigger to a prayer. I find myself, I find myself praying for you with a glad heart. I am so pleased that you have continued on in this with us, believing and proclaiming God's message from the day you heard it right up to the present. There has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the God who started this great work in you would keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish on the very day Christ Jesus appears. It's not at all fanciful for me to think that this way about you. My prayers and hopes have deep roots in reality. You have, after all, stuck with me all the way from the time I was thrown in jail, put on trial, and came out of it in one piece. All along, you've experienced with me the most generous help from God. He knows how much I love and miss you these days. Sometimes I think I feel as strongly about you as Christ does. And this part, I, I love this part, and I pray this, particular prayer for many of my friends. Listen to the way that the message puts it. So this is my prayer, that your love will flourish and that you will not only love much, but love well. Learn to love appropriately. You need to use your head and test your feelings so that your love is sincere and intelligent, not sentimental gush. Live a lover's life, circumspect and exemplary, a life Jesus will be proud of, bountiful, bountiful in fruits from the soul, making Jesus Christ attractive to all, getting everyone involved in the glory and praise to God. I want to report to you, friends, that my imprisonment here has had the opposite of its intended effect. Instead of being squelched, the message has actually prospered. All the soldiers here, and everyone else too, found out that I'm in jail because of the Messiah. <clears throat> That piqued their curiosity, and now they've learned all about him. Not only that, but most of the followers of Jesus here have become far more sure of themselves in their faith than ever, speaking out fearlessly about God, about the Messiah. 
It's true that some here preach Christ because with me out of the way, they think they'll step right into the spotlight, but the others do it with the best heart in the world. One group is motivated by pure love, knowing that I am here defending the message, wanting to help. The others, now that I'm out of the picture, are merely greedy, hoping to get something out of it for themselves. Their motives are bad. They see me as their competition, and so the worse it goes for me here, the better they think for them. So how am I to respond? I've decided that I really don't care about their motives, whether mixed, bad, or indifferent. Every time one of them opens his mouth, Christ is proclaimed, so I just cheer them on. And I'm going to keep that celebration going because I know how it's going to turn out. Through your faithful prayers and the generous response of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, everything he wants to do and through me will be done. I can hardly wait to continue on my course. I don't expect to be embarrassed in the least. On the contrary, everything happening to me in this jail only serves to make Christ more accurately known. Regardless of whether I live or die, they didn't shut me up. I'm Christ's messenger, dead, I'm his prize. Life versus even more life, I can't lose. As long as I'm alive in this body, there's good work for me to do. If I had to choose right now, I hardly know which I'd choose. It's a hard choice. The desire to break camp here and be with Christ is powerful. Some days I can think of nothing better, but most days, because of what you are going through, I'm sure that it's better for me to stick it out here. So I plan to be around a while, companion to two as your growth and joy in this life of trusting God continues. You can start looking forward to a great reunion when I come visit you again. We'll be praising Christ, enjoying each other. Meanwhile, live in such a way that you are a credit to the message of Christ. Let nothing in your conduct hang on whether I come or not. Your conduct must be the same whether I show up to, the, to see things for myself or hear it from a distance. Stand united, singular in vision, contending for people's trust in the message. The good news, not flinching or dodging the slightest because, the because of the opposition. Your courage and your unity will show them what they're up against. Defeat for them, victory for you. And both because of God. There's far more, there's far more to this life than trusting in Christ. There's suffering for him. And the suffering is much a gift as the trusting. You're involved in the same kind of struggle you saw me go through, on which you're now getting an updated report in this letter. All right. Um, you know what guys, it is almost 7.20 and we like to try and keep this between 15 and 20 minutes long. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just end there at the end of chapter 1 of Philippians and let um, Monday's Pray First launch into um, Philippians chapter 2. So, on that note, I want to pray us out. Um, but before I pray us out, well now I'm going to pray us out Phil. So. First. Sorry, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much. Thank you for this glorious Friday, Lord. Thank you for opportunities to come from you from many different areas to show what hands and feet can do, Lord. <laughs> thank you that we know that in all suffering, Lord, that you are there with us. Thank you, Lord, that we know that you are strength in our tough times, Lord. Thank you for this word, Lord, where Paul shows us that it doesn't matter if we're suffering, if we're in prison or we're not, it's all for you, Lord. Death, life, it's all for you. So, Lord, please bless everyone that's watching here right now. No spirit, but your Holy Spirit have you with my friends. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, before I completely say goodbye and say goodbye and turn you off, I just want to encourage you guys, it is Father's Day weekend, Father's Day weekend. And for me at church, that means that um, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to celebrate our dads. We, of course, we Cross Point Church, we celebrate well, special food, special gifts, and a really cool love sign that's painted so that if you want to bring your dads and have a great photo op in front of that, that'd be great. A little biased, my daughter painted the sign, so I think it's amazing. But So that's one thing, and I just want to encourage you. But then I also want to encourage you on this, and I want to leave you with this. Father's Day, Mother's Day, any kind of special events like that, sometimes it can bring up stuff for us. And whether or not you had an incredible father that may not be with it, with you anymore, so that might, that might hurt because you miss him. Or whether you had an absolutely horrible father and you're like, oh, Father's Day is not something that I, that I celebrate because of the memories you had. Or perhaps you're like me that grew up without a father, not by any fault of his home. He was, he was killed when I was much younger. But there are absentee fathers, there are great fathers that are no longer with us and they're 
stinky fathers and all of that and all of that remember who the ultimate father is and that is our Lord and that is that is God the Father so we look to him so if you're feeling that emptiness because you miss your dad or you wish you would have had a different dad remember our perfect father in heaven and he's there to impart the wisdom to impart everything on us just like just like Solomon wanted to do to his sons in in Proverbs God does that to us through his word through his word so celebrate Father's Day even if it's just celebrating our Lord all right you guys have a fantastic day, and I will see many of you on Sunday, and I'll see others of you next week. Share this out. Bye, friends.